Greetings. My name is Christina Teodoraki. I'm editor of Small Business Economics and Entrepreneurship Journal, and I have the great honor to interview today Marlene Orozco, who is lead research analyst of Stanford Latin Entrepreneurship Initiative in Stanford, Stanford University. Welcome, Marlene, and thank you for joining us for this interview series. Thank you, Christina, for happy, having me. I'm happy to be here. So Marlene is going to give us more insights uh, for her article published in Small Business Economics in July 2021, entitled uh, The Salience of Ethnic Identity in Entrepreneurship and Ethnic Strategies um, of uh, Business Action Framework. So starting my first question, could you please, Marlene, give us um, briefly uh, more details about what your article is about? Sure, my pleasure. So there's been a lot of research on how different characteristics, say gender or ethnicity, really push people into entrepreneurship. But there's really little that's known about how ethnic identities may inform growth and business strategies beyond this initial entry. And in this paper, what I do specifically is I, I ask and I explore how an ethnic identity of a business owner informs these business strategies. And I draw on 65 in-depth interviews with Latinx entrepreneurs to examine this very question, how they make sense of their ethno-racial identity in the context of their business orientation and their market reach. That is how they see themselves in relation to their customers and their product. Um, if in fact they're serving co-ethnic markets or if they're in a mainstream market, when and how they choose to play up um, their identity or in some cases cloak their ethnic identities. And we know that um, Latinos are racialized as a homogenous group. So I also very deeply consider the intra-group dynamics across class, gender, and race in this paper. Ultimately, I find that choosing when and how to leverage an ethnic identity is largely reserved for entrepreneurs who have obtained higher education, the later generations, and those entrepreneurs that are operating in professional industries, which taken together really means that the entrepreneurs who can skillfully navigate resources and understand the motivations of resource providers. Great. Uh, can you tell us why your article is important and what do you learn from your article that we didn't probably um, know already? Sure. As one of the, um, the main contributions of this paper, I present a typology of ethnic strategies of business action. And this really captures the ways in which an ethnic identity is strategically invoked in the pursuit of profit. The overarching push-pull dynamic in the entrepreneurship literature makes it seem like ethnic and racial minorities are so structurally inhibited that they are void of any agency. And in depicting entrepreneurs as largely necessity-driven, we really miss out on understanding the opportunities that are supporting their growth. So one of the strategies that I describe in the paper is authenticity. This is when an ethnic identity is played up to generate um, uh, you know, business through their insider knowledge. Many of the entrepreneurs whom I spoke to talked about the changing demographic and the growing Latino population and markets across the country. And in the paper, I highlight the experience, the stories of Hector, who owns a multicultural marketing company. And he said that he had looked at the numbers in North Carolina. It was the fastest growing state for Latinos. And he found that there's a lot more opportunity for educating people that are not so familiar with different backgrounds of Latino consumers. They're less aware of the cultural nuances. So being Latino, he says, has helped in terms of credibility. When you're selling insights and campaigns, specifically targeting Latino consumers, he said it helps when you are one of those consumers. This is definitely a very important issue. And also we hear how passionate you are, you are about this topic. Can you probably tell us uh, how did you get to the idea of this research in the early beginning? Sure. So as you know, as broader context, Latinos are starting businesses at a faster rate than all other demographic groups. So initially, when I set out on this interview project, I was seeking to really explore the structural challenges that Latino business owners were facing. I was expecting to hear these entrepreneurs talk about how their identity serves as the basis of discrimination and poses challenge and challenges in terms of being able to access capital, which is really the overarching storyline of research on minority entrepreneurship. But in listening to them speak about their businesses and the importance of their ethnic identities, they were describing real business opportunities. Latinos are also opportunity-driven entrepreneurs. 
So this particular research paper that came out of the broader interview study really ended up being about the upsides or a more positive angle uh, on ethnic entrepreneurship. This is great to hear about this uh, uh, inspiring insights from the study. Can you tell us where do you see this research on this topic going forward and what the new ideas uh, are you working probably on now? Sure. So we're really in a uh, historical moment in time right now where ethnic entrepreneurs, especially those in professional industries, they have an opportunity to strategically elevate their ethnicity to offer competitive advantages and business strategies in the rise of diversity, equity, and inclusion, DEI, and environmental, social, and governance, ESG efforts. So it will be really important to understand the impact of this growing opportunity structure. And in a project that I'm currently working on right now, I'm interviewing chief investment officers at large corporations, university endowments, public pen pensions, to really see how their perspectives on diversity initiatives in the finance industry may be involving, uh, and certainly how they are reaching out or considering um, the growth and support of minority entrepreneurs specifically uh, in their institutions. Great. And from a practice-oriented um, perspective, or probably the application of uh, your findings and uh, uh, from all the learnings of the study, uh, can you give us more insight about uh, about how the, the findings of the study can be applied or any advices uh, for, um, on, on their application for practitioners? I think, you know, first and foremost, this is a study of many future studies, I hope, that will show positive entry. Um, entry points and business opportunities in relation to minority entrepreneurs. Again, all business trends are showing continual positive growth in the number of new Latino and minority owned businesses, where, whereas there's been you know, decades long decline among white owned businesses. So understanding what ethnic identity means to these entrepreneurs and how it plays out in their business practices will be critical for, critical for leaders of you know, supplier diversity chains and other institutional segments that are hoping to um, diversify their efforts and really explore the untapped potential of minority entrepreneurs. Again, a force uh, to be reckoned with in uh, the, the business segment. Thank you very much. This is the beginning of a, a series of studies and inspiring the research community. Uh, thank you very much for sharing with us uh, these insights. And uh, any last comments for our readers? I mean, I, I hope that folks will uh, also continue join me on looking towards, um, you know, some of these positive angles. Uh, the the growth trajectory, as I mentioned, of Latino and minority entrepreneurs, um, you know, has installed even when there's been changes and fluctuations in the labor uh, market. So, you know, there's much more there than just population trends that we need to uncover um, and, and really kind of seek out what some of these opportunity structures um, and, and business opportunities are. Thank you very much uh, for uh, this interview. And um, if you want to, uh, the link can be shared um, on this uh, article. If you want to um, read uh, the more details about uh, this uh, study. Thank you very much, Marlene. Thank you, my pleasure.